It is literally impossible to be a woman. Society has always placed conflicting and demanding expectations on women. They were expected to be pleasing, yet take up little space. They were expected to fulfill certain roles, but often without any choice in the matter. Even women who defied expectations faced harsh consequences. Skilled healers in the Middle Ages were once respected, but later accused of witchcraft and punished. Throughout history, women have faced constant challenges and punishments simply for being themselves. The Scold's Bridal, also called Branks, was a cruel punishment used in 16th and 17th century England and Scotland. It was meant to silence women who were considered too talkative or gossipy. This metal device looked like a mask, often with horns and scary faces. It had a painful metal bar that went into the woman's mouth, stopping her from speaking. The woman would also be paraded around in public, which was meant to be humiliating. The Scold's Bridal shows how women were punished for simply speaking their minds in the past. It's a reminder of how important it is to have freedom of speech for everyone. In medieval times, a word called shrew described women who were considered loud, outspoken, and challenging of societal expectations. Similar to the scold punished with the scold's bridle, these shrews faced harsh consequences for not conforming. One such punishment was the shrew's fiddle, named for its vague resemblance to a musical instrument. However, unlike a violin that creates beautiful sounds, the fiddle was a cruel contraption. It had a large hole for the head and two smaller ones for the wrists, effectively locking a woman's head in place and restraining her arms. This way she was both physically prevented from moving and silenced from speaking. Similar devices, used to restrain people who challenged societal norms, have been found in various cultures throughout history, including Denmark, Japan, Iran, and even ancient Rome. These tools show a disturbing trend of silencing individuals who dare to speak up and be different. From the 13th to the 17th century, England employed two horrifying devices to punish individuals, most often women, who were deemed disruptive or violated social norms. Cucking stools and ducking stools. The cucking stool appearing first resembled a public toilet seat. The punished person, usually restrained, would be paraded through town, enduring public humiliation and ridicule. However, the ducking stool was far more brutal. This chair, similar to the cucking stool but attached to a long beam, could be dipped repeatedly into water. This process, meant to be a form of torment, could lead to drowning. Ironically, if someone died by drowning, it was considered proof of their innocence, even though the punishment itself was unjustified. In 16th and 17th century England, a cruel punishment called the drunkard's cloak awaited those caught publicly drunk, and sometimes women deemed promiscuous. True to its name, the cloak was actually an empty beer barrel. With holes cut for the head and arms, the wearer would be forced to lumber around town in this cumbersome and humiliating contraption. The weight of the barrel was matched only by the public shame inflicted by the onlookers' jeers and insults. This harsh punishment serves as a reminder of the harsh and unfair treatment many people, particularly women, faced for simply not conforming to societal norms of the time. Author Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel, The Scarlet Letter, depicts Hester Prynne forced to wear a red A as punishment for adultery. This practice wasn't just literary, it actually happened in real life. In places like England's Plymouth Colony, people accused of adultery were forced to wear specific markings on their clothes as a sign of their crime. These could be letters like A or AD, openly shaming them in public. Anyone caught without these markings faced whipping, further humiliation and social isolation. During the horrific witch hunts of Europe, particularly in England and Scotland, accused individuals, both men and women, faced a nightmarish test known as pricking. This was not a genuine test, but a form of cruel torment disguised as a method to identify witches. Witch hunters searched for witches' marks on the accused, often ordinary blemishes or moles. If none were found, they would resort to pricking the person with specially designed needles. These needles would repeatedly pierce the flesh, searching for a spot that wouldn't bleed and supposedly wouldn't cause pain, which was believed to be a sign of witchcraft. Adding to the torment, the accused might also be subjected to the scratching test. The supposed victim of witchcraft would be encouraged to scratch the accused until drawing blood. If their symptoms improved after scratching, 
it was seen as further proof of the accused being a witch. Amputation, unlike the other instruments of torment, wasn't elaborate but inflicted permanent and agonizing punishment. Evidence suggests a 3,000-year-old Chinese woman had her feet amputated, possibly as punishment for offenses like cheating or stealing, under a practice called yue. Another form of amputation, rhinotomy, involved the removal of the nose. This was used in ancient Egypt and the Byzantine Empire, primarily as punishment for women accused of adultery, while men faced lighter penalties like fines or beatings. This practice, unfortunately, wasn't limited to these regions and extended to other parts of the world during medieval and ancient times. While not as physically brutal as other methods, status degradation has been a harsh and persistent form of punishment throughout history, impacting women even today. Roman Emperor Augustus used this tactic during his reign, stripping adulterous women of certain citizen rights and imposing financial burdens. Similarly, in the Korean Choson dynasty, noble women caught committing adultery or remarrying as widows faced a significant decrease in their social standing. They lost many privileges and faced limitations on their future, with their descendants even barred from holding certain positions. However, the Choson dynasty reserved its harshest punishment, death for high-status women who committed adultery. History exposes the mistreatment individuals faced for defying societal norms, particularly women. From barbaric punishments to public humiliation, these practices highlight the dark side of societal control. Though specific punishments are gone, their underlying causes, prejudice and suppression of individuality persist. We must remember these injustices and actively challenge inequalities affecting marginalized groups today. By promoting understanding and equality, we can build a future where everyone can reach their full potential, regardless of identity.